Hi, this is Brent LeBlanc, and today we're going to do a user requested tutorial, just a quick one. Uh, so I got a message on uh, YouTube from Myanim Dot, who said that he w doesn't want to buy his own leaf texture from Megascan or Textures.com or Polygon, and wants to know how he can make his own leaf texture uh, from his own phot photography. Okay, so to get started, I have uh, this first photograph. Uh, well, I took a bunch. Um, unfortunately, I do not have a polarizer, which uh, you can look online on what a polarizer is, but it's a way to position your light somewhere in the scene and then polarizing the light uh, with your filter, your polarizing filter, so that you can get rid of some of these highlights. I don't have one. I actually do have one, but it doesn't fit. Uh, the lens of my new camera, so I'm going to get one soon. But for now, we're just going to have to deal with this. So if you don't have a polarizer, you just need to position the light as best as you can, and then you're going to have to go into Photoshop and fix uh, some of the specularity. So I tried to just get the leaf as flat as I could, and uh, I had to take two photographs uh, just so that I could get these edges, and I'll just stitch these two together. These seem to be the best out of the ones that I got. Um, so we'll just go with this first one. So I started messing with the exposure and I shot this in raw, um, which I recommend that you do if you can. And I'm just trying to get the most data that I can out of it. Try to balance the uh, temperatures as best as I can so that it looks white. So now that we have the diffuse on the top side, uh, the bottom side was not much specular. So it was much easier to photograph. Okay, so I'm gonna use this one, this one, and this back side. And then what I did was I took this lamp that I have on my uh, drawing table and I'm gonna put it up to this light and I tape it there and I'm gonna stop way up I think I did like F22, yeah. And I just put the leaf directly onto the lamp and just exposed for it. I stopped up to F22, and this is gonna be my transmittance map, or my translucency map. So I just uh, taped it to this uh, this light. Uh, you know, you, you, you'll just have to figure out a solution that works for you, but this is like a really fast way to get um, your translucency map. So you can see what areas of the leaf are occluding light, and then you have these little, the cellular pattern that's going through. Okay, so let me just color correct this one. All right, so and this is what my setup was. I just uh, have my drawing table here, I have this light, uh, and then I just have this leaf just sitting on the table and just taking a photograph uh, straight down. All right, so once I have all five of these photographs, I'm going to open them up into Photoshop. All right, so I'm going to start loading all these into the same file. I'm just going to roughly cut these out. All right, so I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is try to stitch together these two. Uh, these two first leaves on the front side. So now I'm, I'm going to stitch together these two uh, transmittance versions. Okay, so now we want to cut this thing out. So I'm going to use a color range. Just going to crush this down. And I'll do an effects, color overlay, and just do white. looks like some of the 
mask didn't get it entirely. So what I'll do is I'll just duplicate this. A couple times. And then go in and just clean up those areas that are still there. All right, and that'll be our leaf mask. All right, so I'm going to try to mitigate some of these really egregious white areas. So I'm going to do a color range, some of these, uh, these specular areas. Let's do a color range and try to get rid of some of that. I'm just making this so that I can see just the luminance value. Select that same range and then I'm going to make a hue saturation and we're just going to increase the saturation. Now with a, uh, a levels, I mean, this is a pretty hacky way to do it. I mean, really what you want to do is get a polarizer, maybe use a flatbed scanner that might help you out more, but we're just trying to get that specular detail out of there. So I had to go in and use a levels. Uh, once I've got that levels, then I kind of brought it down. And I know it looks weird here, but if you turn on your this uh, DSAT layer, this is kind of like a luminance check. Uh, this is the, the value that I want to get. You know, I want to bring the values down. Um, color is very good at deceiving you. So whenever you're trying to get your values uh, set, always use a um, some type of luminance check. So I just have a hue saturation here, just turn satur saturation all the way down. Uh, and then when I brought these levels down, these are more you know, reasonable. Probably something like that. And then uh, this was just a little bit of more of a grade. And then this on top of that is just me actually just painting color straight in. Probably want to even work this a little bit more. All right, we have our one mask, we have our leaf, or we have our, we have our diffuse, we have our mask. All right, so now we're going to try to line up this uh, backscatter. So we have the transmittance and the front of the leaf and our mask. I'm gonna add a hue saturation value. And let's do a levels. This rough, the transmittance and the diffuse. Okay, so now I'm just going to uh, use this roughness map to uh, draw the displacement for these uh, these veins, the the other one didn't work very well, so I'm just going to use this because it's more lined up with the uh, the diffuse. So here we go. Okay, so since this vein map doesn't really line up very well with my transmittance version, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint out all of these veins, and then I'm going to just reintroduce them with this vein map that I uh, made here. So let's do that now. So now I've got my uh, leaf vein here that's clean. So I'm going to duplicate this and let's blur it a little bit. I'm actually going to uh, constrict this signal a little bit. 
just shaping my translucence a little bit more. Here's my displacement vein signal. And I'm just going to duplicate this and make one that is very blurry. I just want to invert this. So white is up. This fine, this broad, this vein. We got our roughness. Transmittance, our diffuse, and our mask. Now I'm going to open up. Uh, I had done one earlier where I had uh, the channels embedded in here. So I'm going to. This one's the same. I'm going to delete these two. So. I want to embed this this broad channel that I have here. So I'll just steal one of these channels. Copy that channel. Let's put it right here. And then we want to take this disp vein, take the red channel, copy, and let's We'll put that in the blue channel. All right, so we've got this broad, this fine, this vein, and our alpha all in one map. All right, let's save this out. All right, so now that we have all of our maps, let's get started on the leaf. So I'll just make a plane here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just opening up these maps over here and I'm gonna use Leaf Diffuse and then our combination map list here and then Roughness and Transmittance and just drag them in. So now I have all four in here. So let me just get these ordered. And let's make the standard and get all these maps hooked up. All right, so for these, uh, uh, the displacement broad, fine, and, and uh, the displacement vein, uh, the displacement broad is in the red channel, the green channel is the displacement fine, and the blue channel is the displacement vein. So I'm going to just uh, hook these up into the AI range. And I'll just do a uh, plus minus average. And to test each one individually, I'll just do this luminance channel here. All right, so we have everything, the base things hooked up. I didn't mess with the roughness yet, but let's not worry about that. So I'm going to apply it to this material. All right, it's about the right size. All right, let's bend this down. And let's add some edge loops in here. Just to give it some uh, shaping. So we have our first leaf here. Let's make a HDR. And we'll hit render. So now what we gotta do is we gotta add some subdivisions into this. Cat Clark, let's try three. Auto bump, and let's do point one. Update scene. Uh, another thing we gotta do is we gotta turn off opaque so that it gets cut out. All right, and it's very shiny. So for now, let me just turn on three manipulation. Uh, let's freeze transformations on this guy and let's call this leaf one. So we have a leaf material here. So let's turn on the subsurface and I'll put a light in the scene here. Let's actually make a second leaf as well. We can have something for it to shadow on too. I'm going to make an AI color correct. 
So I'm going to take the, to add a little bit more to it, I'm going to take the displacement uh, vein that I have here and let me make an AI range. And I'll take the blue channel. And red's fine. And I'll call this disp vein malt. And let's put that into the subsurface amount. I'm going to flip this. Turn this down. So let's get our displacements working. So right now we have the displacement broad. Definitely get some stair stepping. I probably should have done 16 bit for that. All right, so now I'm gonna put the displacement fine in. I'm just gonna do this off screen. This would probably work perfectly well as a bump map, but we'll just leave it at displacement because it's a really light scene, so it doesn't matter. Displacement vein. So now I'm going to just take the plus minus average and input it straight in and let's see what we get. Let's do an average. I really need to do 16 bit for that one map. But see, see all that banding? That's not good. Back to shaded. I like I likely need to go in and like soften um the tips of the vein on the edges, but for this it should be fine. Okay, let's mess with the roughness a little bit. Yeah, that banding is pretty awful. So, uh, if I was going to do this again, I would up res that. Uh, those are just place of maps to 16 bit. Um, but this should be fine. I mean, we're never really going to get that close to a leaf anyway, unless it was hero. But just as a, uh, you know, a demonstration, this will work. And I'm not really going off any reference, which is not a great idea, but. So some quick leaves, uh, all from photography. So scans are definitely ideal uh, if you want something super realistic. But you can get away with just, you know, doing your own photography and then just breaking out the maps yourself. Uh, doing it this way um, and you can always just if you're doing something stylized you can just paint this stuff uh, by yourself um, I mean unless you're getting really close you would never need something that's this high res uh, but you know if you just want it in your library this is a, a good start for it so yeah and the next uh, tutorial I'm gonna be going over photogrammetry so I uh, hope to see you in the next one Thanks.